Hello designers, Matthew here. So here we are in our final installment uh, that's going to cover some of the things that we talked about during our time together uh, at this workshop in Yale, or at Yale, I should say. And what I want to do today is I want to look at how we might work with a, a sensor. In this case, we're going to take a look at how we might work with a connect. So we're going to take advantage of some of the things that we've learned already. We learned a little bit about instancing, and we're going to use some of that information and in what we're working on here today. And what we're going to build by the end of all this is we're just going to build out something that looks a little bit like this. And the idea here, right, is that if I scoot around, excuse me, I've got a cat on my lap. There we go. <clears throat> all right. So what we've got here is we've got a kind of point representation of my body, right? We kind of might recognize what this point cloud kind of situation looks like, or not point cloud, but joint cloud, you might say. You can see my head's located up here, my arms moving, right? And we've got this kind of beautiful, wispy, kind of spidery, drifty, cloudy kind of situation. So why are we starting with this thing? Well, this is a, a kind of fast way to think about some of the, the kind of immediately recognizable kinds of pieces of real-time rendering you might do with a sensor like a Kinect. Uh, and it's going to let us look at some of the things we've learned when it comes to instancing. So we're going to work with this thing first. Uh, hopefully that'll all make sense here in just a little bit. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're kind of up to today. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scoot this away, and we can get started. All right, there are a bunch of really interesting things for us to kind of dig into here. But for starters, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up a new network. Or you can find a place in one of the networks that you already have to start working. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get rid of all of the stuff that we might have in here, here, in here to get started. We're going to hit the H key to home our network here to get started. And uh, we're going to go ahead and drop in a connect chop. Uh, so just like any other kind of uh, environment that you might work with a connect in, the connect chop has access to just about all the same things you'd see in the typical SDK. And so that might look like uh, a player index, right? If we can get in here a little bit closer, we can see our player index, hip location, TXTYTZ, um, spine, neck, head, shoulders, right? All sorts of joint information that's kind of packed up in here. And we see this represented right in our chop data that's uh, very nicely kind of presented here for us. In our case uh, here today, I'm using the version two of the sensor. I've got the full skeletal tracking, but we can see that we could also do a seated position. I'm only going to worry about one player today because I happen to be the only person uh, available to kind of take a look at what this is going to look like and how it's going to behave. And I'm going to leave uh, a bunch of these other parameters kind of set the way they are. I'm not going to worry about uh, interactions or bone rotations or bone links or anything uh, like that right now. If we were doing some character rigging, we might want to take advantage of some of those attributes. Uh, but today we're going to just go ahead and kind of leave those alone. And we can see here kind of like right off the bat, we've got some great information to kind of use when we're thinking about how we're working with data coming in from a sensor like this. Now, this is really wonderful. This is pretty great. But, you know, it might be a little bit cumbersome to think about a, a kind of more complicated way of making this work, right? So certainly we could set up our render network. So let's go ahead and add our essential ingredients here. Hopefully we all remember what that looks like. So for example, a geometry, a camera, a light. We also need to render all this. So I'm gonna scoot these up here just a little bit. We'll add a render top. Oops, hey, render, not reorder, render top. There we go. And, you know, we could do something like this. We could come over to our geo and we could just add a sphere in here to get started. A sphere sop. We need to display and render this thing so it'll show up. And we could turn down its radius a fair bit. Oh, we don't want it to be too big right now. Okay, 
So, you know, one way to tackle this problem might be to think about, well, how can I connect uh, something here from my chops right over here to my geometry? Well, we've certainly learned some ways to do that. Let's go ahead and attach this to a null for, the, for a moment, and let's view this. Make this a little bit bigger, and we could come up here to our geo, and we might imagine this is, uh, right, we could think about this being the head attribute. So I think there's head right there, and I should be able to zoom in on that, drag around a little bit. There we go. So I could grab, it, grab head TX, and I could move that over to TX, and I'll just let that be relative references right now, because we're going to get rid of these in just a little bit. So those are head TX. Y. Let's just go ahead and make a copy, copy, paste that business for TZ. All right, there we go. So that's, you know, all right, well, I can definitely see this tracking my head position. That's cool. And we can imagine that we could go through and we could do that for every single one of these parameters. We could kind of build out a whole big set of uh, points or a big set of spheres in our geometry to kind of sort out how to make that work. And while we certainly could do that, it might make us, uh, you know, just like a little bit crazy at the end of the day um, because we're going to end up with a big chunk of pieces of geometry, right? So if we were to kind of middle mouse click on this, We've got 76 channels in here. That's a whole lot of referencing or exports to set up. And that seems like a kind of silly amount of work. Uh, and that's all right because, you know, we learned a pretty clever thing just the other day. We started to learn about instancing. And instancing is something that we can take advantage of to use the same geometry, right? The same geometry comp. And we can take that piece of geometry and draw it at multiple locations. Um, and we, you know, when we're using instancing, we get these extra copies of our geometry almost for free. Not, you know, not completely for free, but it is a very cheap way of um, doing lots of complex uh, kind of geometric translation, uh, which is pretty slick. It's going to be a really powerful thing for us to look at. And if we can find a way to take advantage of that as an idea, we're going to be much happier. So how do we make that happen? 